Okay, here's me in college. <laughs> I went to school at Miami University, not the fake one in Florida. <laughs> That's right, I said it. The real Miami in what state? Ohio. You know it. Interesting piece of factoid, uh, Miami was a university when Florida was still occupied by Spain. That's on a t-shirt in our bookstore, it's really cool. So just if anyone ever asked, this is the original Miami. Uh, I had class with none other than Ben Roethlisberger. You guys know him from the Steelers, uh, class act. And when, <laughs> when we were in school, he actually never came to class. Well, you know, it sort of makes sense though, because if you know you're gonna be drafted, would you be in class? And I talked to my marketing professor, I was like, hey man, is Ben gonna graduate? How, is he failing? I'm, I'm so interested in this. He goes, you know what, man? You think Roethlisberger wants to make $40,000 a year in marketing or 10 million in the NFL? So maybe class wasn't for him, in all senses of the word. So he did not come <laughs> to class. But hey, man, he's won two more Super Bowls than any of us, so good for him, right? So wearing this name tag in college is when it started, and uh, anyone want to take a wild guess what my major was? Anthropology. Very close. What's the anthropology of business? Very close, begins with an M, ends in marketing. <laughs> you got it. So <laughs> when I began doing this, uh, when I was in college, I had what uh, addiction specialists would refer to as a bit of a drinking problem. I, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't, I don't do anything. I'm not straight edge, I don't have a label on what I don't do, I just don't do stuff. I don't care if other people do, I just don't. But I love DDP, man. Oh, this is this, that's what, on the streets, that's, you know, the, the rough and tough streets of Oxford, Ohio population, all students in six townies. So the, I love Diet Dr. Pepper, and what I, if I'd go to a party, I wanted to have something you know, to drink, so I'd put back a deuce in a night. A deuce is a two liter. <laughs> so what's, what's really just sad and embarrassing is I became addicted to Diet Dr. Pepper. By the end of college, I was putting back three deuces a night. Not every night. That would just be ridiculous. But like over the weekends, I go to a party, and that's six liters, that's 300 ounces of soda. That's a lot of pee. <laughs> Thank God it was diet, right? I may or may not have blacked out one night because I drank too much Diet Dr. Pepper and got dehydrated while I was urinating. But that's not why I'm here to talk about. So wearing this name tag created this new experience, and it was a way to interact with people. And the experience was, hey, let's talk, let's be friends. And in the first couple years of college, I had a tough time because I was the guy who didn't drink or who wasn't smoking or, or doing whatever, wasn't a partier. And in college, if you're the guy who doesn't do that, you're weird. And so the first two years sucked, but then I put on the name tag and the experience changed. Everybody wanted to say hi and eventually became friends and later, if hey, we're getting a beer, do you wanna go? Sure, do you drink? No, whatever, come anyway. Huh, I guess that's what happens when people get to know you as a person and not a preference. How are people getting to know you? What is the experience of interacting with you? Because it creates a sense of engagement. These people are still my friends today. This is over 10 years ago. I've been in these people's weddings. These are people I met because I wear a name tag. And it builds a certain sense of expectation, still with the Diet Dr. Pepper. And so people knew me as the name tag guy. Before like Twitter, before business, before I was the name tag guy, I was, that's what people called me. And in college, there's always that guy, isn't there? Or that girl? But it's usually negative, isn't it? It's always that guy who, what? Got drunk, puked on my shoes. It's always like a negative thing. But that guy with the name tag, that's what people knew me as. And here's where I recorded everything. This is my official scientific documentation of this fake experiment. So this is back from 2000. I wrote down everything that happened, every question, every interaction, everything people did, not because I knew, oh, this would be great for my book, because I didn't, I hadn't done a book. I was just, I don't know. I thought it'd be fun to be a scientist. So I wrote some stuff down. What do people ask? What do they say? Here's my fancy drawing. That, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> and it's cool to look back at this comp book because it has some kind of interesting insight. 
So here's the most common questions people would ask me. Why are you wearing it? Blah, blah, blah. But here's one I got a lot senior year of college. Are you going to wear it to job interviews? Well, what do you think? I mean, would you wear a name tag to a job interview? I mean, it seems like a smart idea. And I'll never forget when my roommate, Wade, uh, senior year, uh, beginning of the year, he said something that kind of stuck into my mind forever, and I'm sure you've heard it before. You might have heard it already this weekend. Don't forget to wear your dark suit. And two words come to mind when you think dark suit. What? Job, interview, career, fair. You ever been to one of these? Job fair, career fair? Okay, not only did I not have a dark suit, I didn't have any suit. So I did the same thing any college kid would have done. I went to Goodwill and bought one for $4. But I bought like a $18 shirt, so kind of classed it up a little bit. <laughs> I stood there at the front door. I wasn't in yet, but I was there on the threshold, like, and you see people running back and forth, resumes fly, everyone looks the same, and everyone's, you know, kissing ass of people they don't even care about. And I'm like, does anyone else smell that? No? Okay. And I knew that I, I didn't belong there. I mean, I belong everywhere, but not there. <laughs> so I went home, took off my suit, got back in my pajamas, and finished my first book. And then, several months later, when I graduated, and keep in mind, I don't drink, so figure this one out yourself, <laughs> I knew upon graduation that I was never going to get a corporate job like the rest of my friends, you know, going into sort of the, the real office job world. I mean, the idea of doing that, I just made me want to jump out of the window naked again. <laughs> <laughs> so you know what I did? I hired myself and got to work. I still haven't been fired, <laughs> which is amazing. My boss is kind of a jerk. So at graduation, I was sitting there like, this is it, man. I, I am highly unemployable. I would make the worst employee or manager of all time. I'm, I'm going to hire myself. So I did. And my parents, uh, from their name tags, Scott's dad, Scott's mom. <laughs> And actually, my, my girlfriend, not pictured here at the time, she comes with a name tag, and this is her idea, I swear to God. It says, S-C-O-T-T-S, or excuse me, S-C-O-T-T -T apostrophe S, Scots. Aww. It didn't work out. <laughs> Hello, my name is Scott Free. So I'm talking to my parents, and, and I'm telling them, Mom, Dad, I want to wear a name tag every day for the rest of my life. They responded with a four-letter word. And on the count of three, I would like you to yell out the four-letter word you think my parents might have said in response to that statement. One, two, three. Okay. <laughs> All this profanity. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> I, and, and I, thought, I thought that was going to be what they were going to say. But instead, they said the word, what? Really? Like, you're cool with me doing this forever and, and somehow making, like, writing this book and making a business out of this? Like, yeah. I'm sure there's another four letter word they were thinking, but they said cool because I don't have good parents. I have heroic parents. If you brought this idea to your parents, what would they say? In 20 years, if your kids brought this to you, what would you say? What is the first word out of your mouth? Do you lay a foundation of affirmation or do you say, what? cool. And so my parents said, cool. And I was like, all right, that's it. I'm doing it. Everybody else, on the other hand, gave me a lot of the other four-letter word, the, the just. <coughs> yeah, but I mean, you can't just make a career out of that. You can't just like avoid the corporate world and, and do your, you can't just hire, you can't just write up, you can't just, 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 just really? Because I think I just did. <laughs> 